Tom Izzo, Go Sparty, Michigan State head coach. He joins us now. Coach, every time we fill out our brackets, we always come to Michigan State and we go, yeah, Coach Izzo, because of you. Now, why are right. we giving you so much credit? Definitely don't deserve it. Yep. But I, uh, I, I guess I got to pull for those Dayton Flyers tonight so that you have something to cheer about, right? No, I don't root for anybody. You don't? Nope. N- nope. Wow. Nope. Forgot where you came from, huh? Oh, no, no. I remembered. They, it was a great tournament run last year, but I wouldn't be fair to Michigan State fans if you played Dayton last year and then I was rooting for Dayton and didn't care about Michigan State, then I would be biased, and I don't want to be biased. Well, I can appreciate that, but I still think uh, the general public should understand that you're your alma mater. you got to pull for your alma mater. I, I, I hope they do well. I, I think that they, you know, they're undermanned. It's not a deep team. Miller did a great job with them last year and certainly this year. I didn't think they deserved to be one of the last teams in. I didn't yeah. think that was fair. And that's why I wouldn't, have, you know, Dayton's playing at home. Well, they're playing at home because the tournament, I thought the selection committee did a poor job of having Dayton maybe the last team in. Yeah. I would agree with that. I don't think they, yeah, I would agree with that 100%. But as far as the Spartans go, we've been a strange team this year, Dan, not our typical team we've kind of lost a couple of players too one in august and one in uh in actually october and never really got a back our best freshman but we've kind of ham and egged it through and we've gotten a little better and we're we are playing our best basketball at the end of the year if uh if we could shoot a free throw we might not be in the position <laughs> we're in we might be a little better but we've uh we've found a way to to win despite that and uh Although the game we lost against Wisconsin, we were 9-for-9. Nine nine, so I'm going back to missing free throws. I think it was more <laughs> successful. Okay, but what is it about your coaching style that comes to uh, the forefront tournament time? God, I don't know. I, 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 I think we've kind of developed a little bit of a tradition here that uh, for some ungodly reason, the players before these guys from – Back from the late 90s and early 2000s on, they just, you know, make March a special month. Even the Magic's, Magic's flying in for this, and Steve Smith, and, uh, you know, even the guys from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So, But do I've you been... teach a style, though, Coach, that, that is, that, like, there is success attached to it because of what happens during March Madness? Well, I, I think the style that, that has helped us, I, I really do, is in our league, you know, possessions matter a little bit more. It's not the old beat 'em up league when Katie Knight and Haskins were here, but it's uh, it's still where possessions matter. And for some ungodly reason, I don't know what it is, we love to run on makes and misses, and yet if we have to play smash mouth, we can. So I think when you get to the NCAA tournament, we can play just about any style. It's been that way most of my career, and I think that has helped us if you wanted to pick out one thing that has helped us in the tournament. What made you put on the kiss outfit for uh, <laughs> March Mad- Midnight Madness? <laughs> what, what the hell were you doing? Hey, I've rappelled down from the ceiling putting on a kiss outfit. was a lot easier than that. I can promise you that. Okay, yeah. when you're at home and your wife is saying, you're really going to do this? You're- well, you know what happens? My wife's boyfriend comes over and he helps me. <laughs> I do something that's really outrageous because the, the insurance and the the money is there. So that guy's happy as hell. But as far as my wife, uh, she thinks I'm nuts. But she kind of dressed up too. She was one of the fans in the bus, so I guess that was good. Oh man! But you got to <laughs> like. Do you have to stay young though, Coach? Considering you know the kids are all going to be the stay. You know they're going to stay the same age. You're the one that gets older. But you got to stay younger. How do you do that? You know, I think that's part of it. You know, just what you said. I got an AD who's off the charts. You know, we're playing games all over the world, and he does things that are unconventional on an aircraft carrier and that. And I, and I think I go along with it. And I think I, the midnight madness stuff is. I think that's the way you stay young. You know, you stay in with the students and. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's it's been crazy, and every year I say, why do I do something so dumb? And then I get done, and I say, you know, it was fun to spend some time. It's fun to remember back to being 18 to 22 a little bit. He's uh, Tom Izzo, Michigan State head coach, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. They've got Georgia coming up on Friday. How crazy were you, though, when you were 18, 19, 20? <laughs> Uh, Mary Uchi and I just kind of ran the streets, you know. It was kind of fun back then. We we often talked that uh, we'd go back to college in a heartbeat, even though we both have 
done pretty well financially and all the things we've gone through. But uh, whenever we talk, which is often, we always talk about going back to northern Michigan and, uh, you know, wearing long hair and bell bottoms and all the good things we did. Were you big man on campus or Mary? <laughs> or was well, Mary we were both kind of shorter, so <laughs> I'm not sure we were big men, but we were on campus. I know that. What about Mariucci? Was he big man on campus? <laughs> yeah, they won the national championship. He was the quarterback, you know. So when you do that, you automatically become something. But uh, uh, up there, nobody really cares. You know, we're just. We were just men on campus, and that's all that really mattered. <laughs> if Kentucky runs the table, Coach, uh, do you put him in as one of the greatest teams of all time? Yeah, I think you do have to. I mean, I, I've never seen a collection of talent like they've got. I've seen, you know, we played North Carolina in '09. That team came back to win a national championship, and I thought they were really, really good. They beat us by 25 in December, and they beat us by 20 in March. But... Um, I, I don't think they're as near as talented as this team. And, and John has done a good job. I mean, if you get that many players, I think it helps when he has some sophomores and juniors now compared to these traditional just freshmen. But uh, that's a special group, and uh, they're going to be hard to beat by anybody. Maybe we should get a collection of all-stars and go play them at the end. Could, we, could you get an all-star team? How would Kentucky do against an all-star team of college basketball players? Oh God, they still got. If you if you really look at it, they still got probably seven, eight of the top ten players in the country. So uh, I think it'd be a hell of a game. <laughs> I, hear me out on this. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday. If Frank Kaminsky was from Yugoslavia or Lithuania, and we didn't really know about him, but we saw highlights, and he was European, he wasn't at Wisconsin. We would probably think of him. He would be more highly valued as a draft pick than the fact that we've seen him four years at Wisconsin. What do you think? I think that's true. I, I do think it's true because I think Kaminsky, I mean, I love Okafor too and recruited him, but I just think Kaminsky uh, does so many things. Uh, you know, he can beat you outside, he can beat you inside, he can beat you with a pass, he can beat you off the dribble. You know, I, I don't know if he's as, as good defensively, but he's pretty good defensively. And um, he's a special player. I, I promise you, Dan, he can really do a lot of things. Do you take it personally when you lose a recruit like Okafor to uh, Coach K? Well, I don't know if I take it personally. I mean, I just I usually I look back and say, well, there's four years of wasted work. <laughs> 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 who was the one guy you recruited that not, that who broke your heart? Who broke my heart? Uh, believe it or not, Chris Weber was one that broke my heart. I thought, you know, we were in there right to the end, and and Jaleel, I mean. Uh, um, uh, uh, not Julio, but uh, no, from uh, that went to Duke also um, last year. Um, God, why am I forgetting the name already? I Jabari for, Parker? Jabari, yeah. Okay. Jabari, I recruited him for four years and loved him and his family. And, and uh, you know, we were right there, but uh, when you lose somebody to Duke, you also say, hey, you know what? They did it the right way, and uh, and they're a good, good program, and you can under, you can understand it. You just uh, you don't want to deal with it sometimes. <laughs> All right, without naming names, when's the last time you lost somebody, and you know you lost somebody to by a nefarious means, where somebody uh, nefarious? Yeah. Wow. Uh, you, you know where I'm from. You know where I got. Oh, my I, I apologize. Why don't you just say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I didn't want to. I I was trying to dress it up. Okay, that somebody cheated. Well, you know, as I said, um, there's cheating that goes on in college basketball, but 90% of the teams, I think, do it the right way, and uh, there's cheating that goes on in your your profession, too. So, um, you know, when you lose a guy to that, what, I, what I've gotten smarter as is you just kind of back out of those guys. If you think, number one, they've got their hand out, or number two, somebody's that you know is cheating, cheats. So... Um, it doesn't bother me like it used to. Uh, I can I can guarantee you that. Yeah, I that would bother me where you said, you know what? That's that's where somebody's lazy, where they say, hey, you know what? All I got to do is give him a couple couple hundred bucks here. I can get this guy. <laughs> See, but you never do that, right? You never give out hundred dollar handshakes, right? <laughs> no, I value my money. I figure that. Uh, <laughs> plus, plus, more importantly, I want to sleep at night. You know, <laughs> I, I want to sleep at night. Uh, so 
the only money I'm giving out is to my damn wife. She gets it all. <laughs> She's giving you $100 handshakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, she doesn't even do that. <laughs> I get a little allowance each week. It's kind of tough, Dan. Oh, but... her boyfriend gets a $100 handshake. <laughs> uh, he's looking for the insurance policy. Yeah. He's, he's going way beyond 100 <laughs> Well, good luck against Georgia, and uh, don't screw it up. Thanks for hey, joining Dan, us. Dan, I love the show, and I appreciate you, and thanks a lot, man. Thank we'll try not to. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Coach Tom Izzo.